I recently got my hands on a BenQ PV270. This is their 27 inch 2K hardware calibrated display. This display is part of their PV, their pro video lineup. Currently, there are no new models in a PV line at this point. However, this display does pack a lot of great features. And what I'd like to do is give you a post-dated review on the PV270 and also give you my thoughts about how this display fits into the world of pro display today now that we have a lot more options. I'm Arts to One saying BenQ Ambassador. Let's get started. Before we start, please subscribe if you're new and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I look cool new videos like this. First, what I'd like to do is give you some background. As a photographer, I'm always reviewing BenQ SFU display lineup. The SFU display line is great because it is the first display line that brought hardware calibrated display to the mass at an amazing price point. Many of us are now owning great display because BenQ decided to venture into this market and I think they've done an amazing job here. The PV270 is a line designed for pro video work and this display, the PV270, was released about one year after the first SW display, the SW2700PT. It amazed me that I haven't had a lot of interaction with this display or even review it for that matter because after having some chance to play with it, this display lineup is really rather amazing. Now, something to keep in mind, though, is that in the U.S. right now, the PV270 is at the end of life already, and I believe it's at the end of life throughout. However, depending on the country and territory that you're in, you may be able to still get one new or, if not, get one refurbished. So that's just something to keep in mind. Also, if you're looking for a new display today or something that's equivalent to this quality, what I would probably recommend you to go out and get is the SW270C because it is using the same panel, and what I'm also going to do is a few comparison videos between this one, the SW2700PT, and also the SW270C. So make sure you subscribe to my channel for that. Now that we got the history out of the way, let's talk about panel spec a little bit. This is a 27 inch 2K hardware calibrated display, a 16 to nine aspect ratio with a resolution of 2560 by 1440. It is a 10 bit panel. However, this 10 bit is implemented via an 8 bit plus FRC. And if you're unfamiliar with that, 8-bit plus FRC, FRC stands for frame rate control. So essentially what's happening here is that majority of the colors is actually being pumped over to 8-bit and the extra 2-bit colors in order to make our eyes believe that we're seeing 10-bit is done over frame rate control. Essentially some of the pixels are changing rather rapidly in order to perceive us into believing that this is now showing 10-bit colors. This is, by the way, most of the other display manufacturer technology that they are using to achieve 10 bits. So BenQ is went in line with any other manufacturers out there. Another thing to note, though, about BenQ FRC, about this particular display and many of their displays, too, is that their FRC is unique because BenQ also implemented an eye care technology. That eye care technology helped reduce screen flickering and also eye fatigue. So that's just something to keep in mind. The built-in LUT for this display, it is a 14-bit 3D lookup table, and this lookup table also is available for third-party access. That means you can use third-party software beyond just the BenQ software to calibrate the hardware portion of this display. The Delta E value to BenQ guarantee for this display is 1.5. So that's something different than the SMU line because in the SMU line, BenQ guarantees that you're gonna get a Delta E value below two. And this one, they even tighten the requirement even further and make the Delta E value 1.5. And that's a really tight requirement there. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with Delta E, the Delta E value is really telling you the variation between what the color is displaying and what it is on the reference color. So the larger the number, the further off that color is, the smaller the number, the better the color is. Essentially for a good display, you always want to get a display that has a Delta E value of below two. And because BenQ guarantees that this Delta E value is at 1.5 or lower, this is gonna be an amazing display. And from my testing, it is really a great display for that matter. This display has a contrast ratio of 1000 to one with a max brightness of 250 nits or 250 candela. It is an LED backlit IPS panel. And what that means is with an IPS technology, you get an amazing angle view. So if you use this display in a production environment where a lot of people have to gather around the display, 
the person standing on the side of the display will see the exact same picture and color as the person standing right in front of the display. For example, right now I can see really great colors looking at this display from the side. Another thing to note too is that because this is a video monitor, the color coverage is going to be a little different where this display can show 96% DCI-P3, 100% Rec. 709 and sRGB along with a 99% Adobe RGB. All of those are amazing color specs we're talking about here. Something to note is that the PV270 lack any support for HDR. And to be fair, when BenQ launched this display, HDR was just in its inception. So what happened is if you want a display that is very similar to this one right here and has HDR capability, the SW270C is going to be a great contender for this. Or if you want to upgrade the SW321C, their 32 inch 4K hardware calibrated display is also another good option as well. Something to note too, and I mentioned this before already, is the panel inside the PV270 is the exact same panel inside the SW270C. This display comes with many great inputs that are still being used today. However, it does lack some of the current standards such as USB Type-C. And understandably so because when BenQ released this display, USB Type-C was still in its infancy. Some of the ports that are available on this display is one DVI, one HDMI 1.4, one DisplayPort 1.2, and one Mini DisplayPort 1.2. Another thing too is that on the side of this display, there is two USB 3.0 ports that you have here. These are Type A and an SD card reader on the side of the panel. Ergonomically, this display can be adjusted like many of the BenQ Pro displays, and it has a wide range of adjustments and position that you can do with the stand that it comes with. The design itself is a little bit dated at this point, but understandably so because back then when this display launched, this was pretty much the standard design that they have. Fast forward to today, we now have display with Infinity Edge and everything. This display does definitely look dated. But more so than the dated part itself is that some of the ergonomic things that I find useful with the SW line is not in the PV line. For example, the stand that comes with the display. On the SW line, there is a handle so you can easily pick up the display, move it around, transport it. Where this one, it doesn't have a handle. So trying to grab this display and moving it around is a little bit difficult. And for me, that's something that I consider is important to me because I'm constantly setting up to do these kind of reviews or setting this up to do calibration tutorials and demos and so forth. So having that handle and being able to just quickly pick up display is important. Another thing that comes standard with this display too is the shading hood right out of the box. However, what's different than the SW line is that this display does not have a hockey puck for quick adjustment. So that's something that if you use the SW display line, you have come to expect that, but this display does not have that. The buttons on this display are touch capacitive. Unlike the more modern BenQ displays where these buttons are now physical buttons, I enjoy the feel of these capacitive buttons a lot and I wish BenQ would brought this back. Another thing to note too is that unlike the SW line where the BenQ name is actually printed very lightly in dark gray on the display, this one BenQ logo is an emblem here on the side. The software set that you would use to calibrate the PV line is called Palette Master and is co-developed by X-Rite. So unlike the SMU line that uses Palette Master Element, this one uses a different set of software in general. The device here that is compatible with this display are only going to be X-Rite devices where the SMU line you can also use a spider device to do the calibration on your display too. So that's just something to think about. Beyond the guaranteed Delta E value and the software set that you use to calibrate the PV270, another thing that I find fascinating about this display too is that BenQ have implemented brightness uniformity on this display about four years before they implemented in the SW line. So this display has an amazing uniformity range. And the other thing too that we see throughout all of BenQ lines is that BenQ have implemented a technology called Backlight Stability Sensor, and that's something really great. It applies to this model and many of the SW models that I've tested too. And what it does is that pretty much when you turn on the display, the backlight's ready to go right away. You don't really have to wait to warm up. This way you can get in and start to work on your project immediately. This display is also pre-calibrated from the factory to a very high standard like all other BenQ Pro displays, and it does come with its own individual calibration report. However, the model that I have here is a refurbished model, so there is no individual calibration report here. Another thing to note about this display is that when it launched, Technicolor was still doing certification, so this display is Technicolor certified. 
But since then, there are other two certification bodies that BenQ have worked with, and that is Pantone and Calman. This display is Pantone validated and Calman certified too, because BenQ have also sent the display to be verified. So now this display is certified by all the standard bodies that are out there, which is really amazing. It also has many great features that we come to expect from the SW line, such as Gamut Dual, that can be implemented as a picture-in-picture -picture or picture-by-picture. -picture. If you use this display with a window system, it does have an ambient light sensor. And this is a feature that is really great on paper because it will measure the ambient light, it will adjust the display according to the ambient light and so forth. But many times, if you adjust your display or you allow your display to be adjusted to the ambient light environment, the colors that you're looking on the display will constantly change and that's not always going to give you the most accurate result. So that's just something to keep in mind there. But again, it's a feature that requires extra software and an operating system specific feature. So in this case, if you're using a Mac with it, you won't be able to use that feature. And lastly, what makes this display really great also is that it has a refresh rate of 60 hertz but it also has a 72 hertz refresh rate which is really designed for 24p video content so that the video can be played in its native cadence without any pull down so that's just something really amazing about this panel and this similar frame rate technology has also been implemented in the current lineup the BenQ SW321C2, where it can be set to different refresh rates so that it matches with your video frame rate. So this has been a brief look and a post-data review of BenQ PV270. I wish I got my hands on this display sooner, but now that I have a chance to play with it, I think the panel quality is really great. Although where it stands today, I think that you're probably better off buying the SW270C, especially if you have a modern laptop with USB Type-C because it's just really one connector that you have to link up to your laptop. When you use this display, what you have to do, if you have a modern computer with USB Type-C or a modern laptop for that matter, what you have to do is use at least three USB Type-C port on your computer. One for the display signal, one for the USB, and another one for the power source to power your computer. So that's just something to keep in mind. Where it is today, if you're using a desktop, it may be relevant. If you can still get one, I think it still represents a really great value. But if you can't get one today, the model that you should look at instead of this one is the SW270Z. So I hope that you find this overview of the PV270 helpful. If you have any questions about the features that I've gone over, please leave them in the comments section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you are new, hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload cool new videos like this. And until next time, art is right.